Evelyn McHale started out with a great childhood. She was born in sunny Berkeley, California, but at the age of only seven years old, her young world was shattered when her parents decided to get a divorce. Evelyn's father was awarded sole custody of her, as well as all eight of her younger siblings. Not much is known why the couple got divorced, but whatever it was, Evelyn must have blamed her mother, judging from statements written by her shortly before her death in 1947. After the breakup of her parents, Evelyn along with her father and siblings relocated to Tuckahoe, New York in 1930. Evelyn and her siblings soon started school there, and she was said to have been a very good student, who was well behaved and made very good grades. After leaving high school, she wasn't really sure what she wanted to do in life, so she decided to join the Women's Army Corps. She was stationed at Jefferson City, Missouri until the end of her service. After a few years, she decided that she wanted more out of life and had been yearning to get married and have a family. She soon left the military life behind and moved to Baldwin, New York, where she took a job as a bookkeeper for a local engraving company. While she was working there, she met a very handsome man named Barry Rhodes, a college student who had recently been discharged from the United States Air Force, Air Force and the two soon began dating. It wasn't long before the young couple were engaged to be married and she was over the moon happy. Sadly, that happiness would not last very long. On April 30th, 1947, Evelyn was looking forward to the visit she had planned to spend some time with her love, but upon arriving at his place, something was not quite right. It's not certain what happened or why she left, but the following morning, she was in a terribly sad state. She was in tears as she boarded the train back to New York. Whatever it was, Barry claimed that he had had no idea, and that when she left him, he didn't know anything was wrong. Regardless, when she went home, she changed into a nice dress and wrote a suicide note explaining why she was about to do what she was about to do. It read, I don't want anyone in or out of my family to see any part of me. Could you destroy my body by cremation? I beg of you and my family don't have any service for me or remembrance for me. My fiancé asked me to marry him in June. I don't think I would make a good wife for anybody. He is much better off without me. Tell my father, I have too many of my mother's tendencies. Who knows what she was thinking, or what was going through her mind, as she made her way to the Empire State Building which was the tallest building in New York at the time. As she rode the elevator to the 83rd floor where she reached the observation deck, she had a long ride to think about things and to change her mind, but tragically, she did not. Very few people were up there that night at the time she got there. A patrol officer was walking by on the corner of 35th and 4th Avenue when he saw a scarf, lightly blowing in the wind, as it fell slowly to the ground. All of the sudden, he heard a loud thump as Evelyn's body crashed into a 1940s United Nations Cadillac limousine. She had just jumped to her death from a height of 1,050 feet, which was exactly 86 stories in the sky. Other than Evelyn, no one else injured on the ground. Even though she hit so hard that it crushed the top of the car in, there was very little blood. It looked as if she was simply sleeping peacefully. A photographer named Robert Wiles just happened to be there and snapped a photo just minutes after her death. It landed on the cover of Life magazine the following week. Her sister later identified the body of Evelyn and out of respect to her dead sister, she honored Evelyn's last wishes and did not have a funeral or a memorial service for her. She was soon cremated. Although nearly 70 years have passed since the sad and tragic death of this poor woman, many people often claim to see her ghost at the top of the observation deck where she jumped from in 1940s clothing. If only she had confided in someone and gotten the help she needed before that tragic night. If you or anyone you know are having problems or suicidal thoughts, please seek help. You're not alone. Help is available. 
The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline's number is 1-800-27-38255. If you liked our story today, would you please help us out by giving our channel a follow and liking our video? It would mean a lot to us. We appreciate you all more than you could ever know. Till next time. P.S. Our merch link is in the description box below. You know you want a t-shirt or coffee mug. They are bad as looking. What are you waiting for? The link is below. See you next week folks.